Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe, a series where we meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. I'm your host, Pim Huberts, and today we're going to be joined by the only Asian tour card holder at this moment. He is a former PDC World Championship participant and the former Asian tour finalist. We're talking about Kai Fan Long. Hello everyone, I'm Kai Fan Long from Hong Kong. This is Darts Around the Globe. Today we are joined by a PDC tour card holder. He is uh, well one of the best darts players from Hong Kong. It's uh, Kai Fan Long. Um, well, welcome uh, Kai Fan uh, how are, how are you doing? Hi, Hi everybody. I'm um, good, yeah, just uh, relax here you now, just practice a bit. Uh, I'm in UK, in Liverpool. Uh, so after the summer series, I just stay in Liverpool and then uh, wait for the next competition. Yeah, you're in uh, in the UK now, uh, like you said, you um, you played the summer series, which went uh, went, went fine, we, we're, we're going to talk about that uh, later. Um, is it difficult for you now to just stay there in your room in England and not knowing when the next tournament is uh, going to be? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, uh, because there's no schedule at all, uh, it depends on UK government and also depends on the PDC as well. I understand that. So just if you have a better clear uh, next forthcoming tournament, then you, you need what to prepare. Now, I I will still play. I play darts every day, so just practicing. But uh, but with a better schedule and stuff, will be better, more easy for me to you know to practice and and prepare and prepare as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I know at least in the Netherlands, everything is slowly opening up. So, can you already find time to practice with somebody else, or in a bar, or maybe a local tournament somewhere, or is it just your uh, practicing uh, like on your own. Yeah, I think uh, UK bars they opened a week ago. Um, I'm, I live in Liverpool. Usually, when I got a tour card, I practice with Stephen Bunting, where he lives in St Helens. Mm-hmm. So basically, we, we we practice like one or two times a week. Uh, I'll go to his place or. Or go to one of the bar nearby in St Helens. Uh, yeah, I think it, it was it would still still be all right to do so because everything's open. But you don't want to travel that much because you don't want to get a ride with some. Uh, to be honest, uh, to be safe as well. Mm-hmm. So for the time being, I think I'm just practicing uh, on my own. And then if there is any online com to 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 enroll, probably I'll get some uh, to make it uh, make it happen. Yeah, as well. Yeah, well, we talking about the online darts. We have seen a lot of online darts the uh, the past uh, months, but I mean now it's a little bit um, less than it was before. But um, yeah, well, what was your opinion on that uh, period of online uh, on the up- uprising of online darts? I think it's brilliant. It's of like the PDC, the, the home tour, that one, I think it's a brilliant idea to, to, to get the, all the tour cards holders uh, to play a bit, you know. Uh, it depends whether you want to play or not. I mean, there, there are so many good online com as well. In UK, I found out, and in Australia. And I participate some, like, uh, uh, some other comms as well, uh, like a COVID-19, COVID something like that. Uh, I yeah. think that, that's a brilliant one as well. And otherwise, if if not, you just click on the online that uh, to play somebody else. There's mm-hmm. there's also a possible way as well. Of course, when everything's open again, people want to go to the to play with somebody else. You know, instead of just playing in the in your house or in the room like that. Yeah, it's more fun. It's more fun actually. Yeah, to to play with somebody else uh, in real time uh, instead of in a virtual virtual way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, uh, everybody will prefer playing a real person uh, uh, than uh, over uh, an online person, of course. Um, let's talk about how um, well how you start your career. How did you start playing the darts in Hong Kong? I think there's no professionals kind of a, the tournament in Hong Kong. I mean, there is, but like a few mm-hmm. in a year. 
uh, so we all started in hobbies. We, we went to the bar and then played some soft tips machines, dust life, get dust life machines. So I grabbed up the uh, house dot. So just throw throw a few bits and then got the boo, well, happy days, and then just carry on. Yeah, because at that time, I think it was uh, 2013 May. That's the first time I grabbed the house dot, electronic darts okay. at that time. Yeah, and then, wow, when I hit the bull, brilliant. So I could carry on. So And there are a lot of local leagues in Hong Kong too. So there are maybe two times of electronic league, uh, electronic darts league per, per, per week. And then there's one steel tip league uh, per week as well. So you can basically play with, if you participate, or that's like three times a week already. So... Uh, so that then, after I got, I found that interest. So I keep playing and then entering leagues, entering some tournaments, and then and there's a lot of qualified uh, qualifications for like some soft tips things, mm -hmm. uh, like travel to Singapore, Taiwan, China, Japan to compete some national games or. Um, or some uh, Dust Life Open, something like that. Then I tried to play a lot, a little bit more since 2014, okay. 15. Then, then I keep going on it. So that, mm -hmm. that's how I started my uh, career. And then I quit. I, basically, I quit my job in 2016. So I turned to a you can say a professional, but it was just try try out at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Have any idea uh, at that time whether to switch to a pro, but just step by step, it's not like one off, you know, just bang, you can win everything. It's like step by step and then just carry on, try and error like that. Yeah, so you said you started playing darts not that long ago, 2013. At what moment did you think, hey, um, I'm talented enough to, well, what you say to, quit my job or and to fully go for the darts at what was there a certain moment maybe like a big tournament win or something like that that really showed you that you truly are a big talent and one of the best darts players from your country um i think that's from 2015 i win a darts live soft tip uh, tournament in the in my in my city like a hong kong tour mm -hmm. um I win that, and then, and then basically there are a lot of tournaments going on every month, so I have to travel a bit and there. And at that time, I was in my finance work for ten years, which uh, I wanted for a change, or a little bit, you know, to 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 change a little bit to my career and stuff like that. But uh, until 2016 December. Uh, our Hong Kong team wins the Soft Art World Cup, mm -hmm. so I think that's a push as well to to make it happen, to to realize that yeah, why not have a go? And then 2017 was the first time I went to uh, Q School, uh, but that's very fresh as well because I started play steel tip in end of 2014, so I don't really have. You know that kind of experience, but I still, I think it's a bit awkward I, I, when I when I remember that I was really slow in playing steel tip when I was like 2017 the Q when the UK Open qualifier because which annoys some people as well I know, <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah, but it's still a learning curve. I mean, it, if if not that. Time, I won't be able to you know compete again. You know, you want to you want to improve yourself by seeing more. You 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 see more people. You know how they play. Then you you know what's the standard of the international standard or PDC standard. Then you go back and practice and try to you know better yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, w talking about the switch you made. Um... Uh, from soft tip darts to steel tip darts um, we know that soft tip is really big in Asia so also Hong Kong of course um, and that the, the the best soft tip soft tip players are like the uh, the true heroes over there um, is 
the steel tip darts and PDC darts, do people know it exists in Hong Kong? Just the regular people. Of course, the, the guys like Rod and Lamb, they know it exists. But the, the guys playing in the bars, do they know, oh, if I'm, if I'm good enough, I can go to Europe and play darts over there? Or it, it's not, or isn't it like that? I think Hong Kong, we have a quite long history of uh, steel tip darts because mm -hmm. the Hong Kong darts, uh, the, the steel tip darts association exists for like 40 years already. So because we were British colony, Hong Kong w w what was British colony. So we have a good steel tip, you know, darts history as well. Um, but then because electronic darts uh, was more popular, so which drives more people. Uh, to switch to soft tape, but without soft tape in Hong Kong, then probably you won't see a lot of people playing now <laughs> than than before because that's that's really can raise the, the the arouse the interest of people playing. You know, there's more enjoyment there. If you put a steel tip board on the bar, probably people don't even bother to touch it or play on it. <laughs> Yeah, but at that time, I think when Royden's and Pauline were in, because Pauline were in Hong Kong as well for like ten years already now, and then Royden's always uh, it's a big names in Hong Kong. So we, we we always watch the games, no matter soft tip or still steel tip. So mm -hmm. I, I think people and uh, will watch a bit on the PDC as well. But now when 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 the darts community is growing bigger, then they will watch everything basically. Before maybe they just focus on the soft tape, but oh well, this Kai Fan or Kevin playing on the PDC, so they 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 they, they will know a little bit more about oh there's uh, some PDC uh, tournaments going on, so let's go support stuff like that. I mean, uh, whatever. I think when when we all love start, I mean, no matter soft or still, we we, we play, you know, uh, and then yeah, that that's the important thing I think. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, that, that's great to hear that the uh, um, people in Hong Kong also get to know more of the uh, the darts in Europe, of course, the PDC darts. Um, I guess the Asian tour is also a big part in making the darts um, more popular in uh, Hong Kong. Is that is that right? Yeah, because uh, before Hong uh, before Asian tour, the only way to play to the World Championship or the World Cup is through maybe qualifying, uh, maybe some Asian qualifying, just like a one goal, right? Mm -hmm. One type, one one game, uh, win or lose. The winners just go to the World Championships. So, and then before that, like 2010, I think there's something like China qualifying, and then so Hong Kong is included at that time. So that's the way to go for the World Championship as well. Uh, for a spot, but with the more uh, more stages in the Asia, with the uh, introduce of the Asian tour, then then and with the money driven, then people will think, oh, okay, there's more stages we can play, and then to play th with the best against not only your local qualifying, but in Asian. So because there are a lot of big names in Asia as well, so. Mm -hmm. Everybody gathered together, so you can even play the top of the Asian. So, which is a good thing as well to to raise your ability and then to see how far you can go as well. And then you can uh, you can play your best and then to increase your standard as well. So, I think which is a good thing for me. I never won in Asian two. Yeah, I think I got a second, but that that's the trial and error. Era as well because when you when you win and lose in Asian too then you know more then you at least you want to aspire to to get a better standard to play against them right if there's no Asian too you don't you don't even play steel tip darts at all probably in some WDF like Hong Kong Open mm -hmm. Malaysian Open stuff like that if not then then I think the Asian tour really helps a, a lot for me or other players you know you want to improve your standard and ability to play as two tips against the best yeah well we have really seen the level on that asian tour with nine darts thrown big averages so it's it's definitely worth it uh, for also for uh, you know globalizing uh, the dart sport um 
let's go back to uh, to your career. Um, 2017, you already um, were talking about it a little bit. You qualified for the UK Open, and I know it's not a tournament where you play directly on the big stage, but yeah. it it still was your first PDC tournament you qualified for. How how did it feel to be part of a big tournament like that? Yeah, I think that's the uh, last year that uh, PDC is still doing the UK Open qualifying. I mean, th- there are, f- I forgot, I mean, f- there are six days mm-hmm. of UK Open qualifying, if I remembered well. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't, because at that time, it's my first time going to the Q school, and because there, for the following subsequent weeks, there's a UK Open qualifying. I mean, me and Royden, yeah, why not have a go? And then we both made it to the UK Open final. So we traveled back to Minehead for the first, uh, for the first, for me, it's the first time to the UK Open qualif- uh, for the UK Open final in Minehead, which drives me drives a long way from the Heathrow to I think three or four hours to <laughs> to Minehead. It's a pretty long journey. Um, and my first game was uh, playing Jermaine or yeah. Mina. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we are good friends now in the tour. Uh, we didn't see a lot, but but we we chill, we chat a lot. I mean, the, in the in the in the in the venue nowadays, even in Facebook, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's an experience because I've never never thought I I could play on the stage or even the stage bot two to six something like that. Yeah, uh, but it's a good experience for me to play against the best of the of the of the of the. Elite player in in the PDC. Of yep. course, unfortunately, me and Royden lost in the first game. I think he lost to Raw Mullinkin, and then I lost to Jermaine. Then we travel a bit, but yeah, it's it's hard it's hard as well because for you to go back after the UK Open qualifier to Hong Kong, and then you fly back again just for one tournament, one single tournament, and then you don't even receive any prize money after the first round, loser. Yeah, that's so uh, it's, there, there's some sacrifice, but you, if you don't make the sacrifice, if you don't 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 push yourself a little bit to to make it, you know, at least you try an effort, you know, to to pay an effort to show up, you know, mm-hmm. even even though you never knows, right? Just like now, I ne- I never know. Now I can go to kind of play in the tour as well, but that experience based from what. I, accumulate from before. Maybe it helps me a lot as well in 2017 for that particular UK Open, you know, which now in the 2020, I played the, f- the second time in the UK Open final in Minehead, which makes me a, li- a little bit more relieved and I know how to prepare for that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think definitely that experience showed it value in the same year because you um, at first, you played the PDC World Cup of Darts with yeah. your your friend Royden Lam. Yeah. Um, you lost against uh, Russia at that time, three to five. Um, yeah, yeah, how important do you think um, for Hong Kong darts that there is a Hong Kong national team on the PDC World Cup of Darts? Yeah, I think. I mean, uh, when I start playing, I watch Royden and Scott play. I think the the best result in the uh, in the quarter final. So we all support them as well. So I couldn't believe that this is my first time to play uh, in the PDC as a national, you know, in the national team as well. That's really different. You know, you're wearing your Hong Kong uh, shirts to play. You represent your country. You represent your city uh, mm-hmm. to play to play in the in this big stage. That's that's brilliant. I mean still uh, unforgettable. So then also driven yourself, you motivate yourself, you want to be part of it every year, then 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 that's how you, you want it and then you keep practicing and you want to represent again. So that's very important uh, um, to, to be a part in the national team to play in the World Cup. No matter in the PDC World Cup or the WDF World Cup or even Softy World Cup, that really helps when you Wearing your, uh, your 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 national team shirts, you want to give it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it must have been must have uh, felt very special to 
represent your uh, country. Uh. Um, yeah, in 2019, you were part of the tournament again, also with uh, Roy and Lam. Um, we know this year there's also going to be a PDC World Cup of Darts. Um, at least we hope so, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Um, yeah, did the PDC already called you or, or something like that? Because no Asian tour uh, is played yet, so we don't know who is going to be your partner. But have they already um, uh, said to you, oh, Hong Kong is going to be part of the PDC World Cup of Darts? Or is it just waiting? Yeah, just waiting. I mean, um, because... Somehow now I got a two card and I've got my own order of merit here in, in the PDC circuit. While there is another qualification through the Asian too, I don't know how when it mixed up how how would it, how would it be happen or how would they arranged it. Mm -hmm. um, just waiting, you know. Just just uh, it doesn't bother me at all. But uh, uh, you know, for me, I just keep more important is on the on the tour, you know. All the players champ, or all, all, all these kind of stuff, uh, feel a bit more worried than, than the World Cup. Of course, you you want to be play your best in the World Cup, but you still need to play your best before the World Cup as well. You know, to get prepared and practice. You know, on your top form. Mm -hmm. So so doesn't bother me too much about uh, the World Cup for the time being. Um, oh. Yeah. So of course, I want to be part of the team again. But how they arrange it, whether the Asian tour will finally got the one stage or two stage to carry on, it depends on different countries, how they implement. Because it's very hard for the Asian tour as well, because supposedly they, they, they got it in, I think, the first one in March or February, but they're now extending, extending until end of August and then September. But there's still a lot of restrictions in different countries, in Taiwan, in Japan, Korea. It's not easy. I think they will fine-tune a little bit, but not sure how, how would it go in the end. Mm -hmm. But for the best, for everyone as well. Yeah, let's hope uh, Hong Kong is going to be part uh, of this uh, tournament again. And if so, you're definitely part of uh, the team because you're a tour card holder, obviously. Um, in 2018, you were uh, on the PDC World Cup of Darts for the first time. Um, you can see this as your, uh, well, your good, as as the end of your good year of uh, 2017, um, because you've won the Asia qualifier and you um, were playing for the first time um, in the World Championship. Yeah. yeah, and on the big stage alone, because the World Cup of Darts you've already played it before, of course. Um, and then you see the draw, and then you're playing Paul Lim. Paul Lim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What were you thinking when you? Uh, Saw that draw. Um, when Paul Lim wins the uh, another Asian qualifier, he, he goes through the Southeast Asian qualifier. I go through the Northeast Asian qualifier. Mm -hmm. So there are two Asians from the the, the Asians going through this uh, qualifying process. I still remember I was playing in Japan when Paul Lim wins that day. I was playing the World Cup in Japan, the WDM one. And then well, I was, we were so happy for him because we were watching the live stream after our game that he, he win the qualifying. You know, that's not easy as well to, 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 to play to play even a, just a one shot, right? It's a one day game. So yeah. and then he, he wins in the qualifying and then he said, Okay, come on, you can do it. You got it's gonna be you for the next qualifying. So I went for the next one. Because uh, he played for Singapore, so that's why he go. He, he plays through the Southeast Asia. I was in Hong Kong. I played through the Northeast Asia, so I play mainly on the against Korea, some China, uh, uh, tai Taiwan, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, people like that. So I win. So happy, you know. Take the not take the night flight back to Hong Kong <laughs> because. That was on Saturday because on Sunday there is a soft tip back tournament. I need to participate, so I just fly back straight away to Hong Kong to participate in that uh, Hong Kong tour in soft tip. Yeah, it's a very tight schedule, and after after be slight before World Championship in November and December, I asked uh, Paul a couple of times. Yeah, let's practice together. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then. <laughs> and then eventually, that uh, we I uh, draw against him. So you can say it's a good thing or maybe a bad thing because you want 
just you don't want to see an Asian face an Asian. But the good thing is there at least there's at least an Asian goes through the the the, the preliminary the prelim round, right? Yeah, yeah. And if I play poorly, maybe it's a good thing as well because I might feel a little bit ease or because we practice a bit, so you don't have many hesitation or nerve mm. on the backstage. But then maybe if you if you if you play somebody that you don't know, maybe you have the adrenaline to 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 keep you more motivate yourself as well. But I'm also happy to you know to play on the first time on my first time, even though that's not. Very brilliant, but at least it's a it's an experience as well as I said. Yeah. And then Paulin literally win Mark Webster on that night. Uh, it's it raised to the high. I mean the crowds. After I lost, I went into the area to support Paul. You know the crowd just shouting for 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 Paul. You know it's amazing the crowd. Mm-hmm. And I fly back and he played against Gary Anderson. He almost hit a nine dart on on, on the. On Almost and missed a double twelve, so which yeah is a very great experience, but it's very hard. I mean to play in the world champ because is in the stage and then the atmosphere, the preparation is completely different. Yeah, but I don't feel too nerve. I mean on the backstage, but of course when you comes in the doubles, then then sometimes that that, that makes you worry a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, sure. you you were there on the world championship, so being part of that uh, competition is already a big achievement, of course. Uh, yes, so, definitely. Um, yeah, and <laughs> talking about Paul Lim, um, you're not very lucky playing him because uh, your first uh, or in the Asian tour in 2019, you got uh, into one final in uh, South Korea, Seoul. Um, and you had to play Paul Lim again and lost in the final, one, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, just talking about that Asian tour, you're a PC tour card holder now. Um, are you still looking um, to attend the Asian tours if they, um, well, if they continue uh, happening? Yeah. Yeah, that's of course the first priority, definitely in in here in the in the in the main circuit here, uh, but. If there's no crash or if time allows, uh, money-wise allows, mm-hmm. of course I want to travel back uh, for for a few Asian tour as well. Um, basically, there are sports through to the World Championships, right? Uh, through the Asian tour, so so which is more temp- which is tempting as well because you know it's very hard to get a spot here. In the main circus uh, for the, of course there's world championship qualifier, but it's I never played it, so I don't know how hard it would be. But it's still the same people here, right? But if yeah. I've got an options for the Asian Tour circuit, maybe it's a good option as well as well for me to 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 have a spot in the in the world championships. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's definitely a, an option to spread your chances of. Uh, because now you're you're even on a world championship uh, spot on the pro tour. Um, of of course, we hope to see you keeping that uh, that spot. Um, and uh, yeah, about the Asian tour, there's now uh, four places um, for people yeah, four to places. go to the to the world championship, which is um, amazing. Um, but besides that, there's also a, a a China qualifier, I think so, and yeah, an, China qualifier and an India and qualifier. J- 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 Japan qualifier, oh, yeah. yeah, and the India qualifier. Yeah. So, do you think eventually the PDC has to decide? Well, um, to just say to all the Asian people, like, oh, if you want to attend the PDC World Championship, you just have to attend the PDC uh, Asian Tour competition, so that they um, make it from four uh, spaces for the championship to um, seven spaces. Do you think I, eventually that's a good decision or not? I don't believe so. I don't believe they would do that. Why they they open up those qualifying for those particular countries because they are massive in populations and massive in darts population as well. Mm-hmm. Imagine billions of people in China and India if every year you see them on the world championship and people will strive to make their effort to to play and then to be a part of it. 
And then that's how the standards comes, and then how they improve the standard as well. That's totally understandable, right? So with that, they have to still give them the sports. That's quite makes sense to give them a sports because there are so many future prospects and so many, you know, if they opens up the dots right fully in their in these countries in these big population countries. I mean, populated countries. It will be massive in for the whole dots community, and even it's benefit for PDC as well, because you see you can't be always few countries playing in a in the in a sports. You have to open up. You have to let all the countries playing. You know, to, that's that's how they improve the standards, mm -hmm. and that's quite important as well. Yeah, yeah, I think I. Uh... I, I of course, there maybe you. maybe that's a little bit unfair because then those people might have like uh, a few options as well. You know, they they have a little bit more options than than for us for mm -hmm. uh, for, for for one single country that not included in that um, in that uh, in that country. Yeah. But 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 still, I mean, for 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 the sake of uh, of the of the more vision, uh, more more long term vision. It's still good to get give them a spot, you know, to 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 let people or to let the Dutch community see more new faces or more nationals represent uh, in in the Dutch uh, big stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I totally uh, agree with you. With uh, like we we've seen with uh, with China and India, they their players don't really attend the Asian tour, um, but. If you look at Japan, we've seen uh, Saigo Asada winning their national championship, their national qualifier. I think it was yeah. even twice, while yeah. he was already qualified through the Asian Tour. So there's like a maybe you as a player from Hong Kong say, yeah, well I don't have a this second chance of qualifying or something like that. But yeah, I guess when you look at the 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 background of and the population of those countries and the interest in darts, it's it's so it's so a good decision, uh, of course. Um, yeah, let's go to 2020 this year. Um, we're slowly um, going to the end of this podcast. Uh, yep. Yeah, this year started while everything was just normal, and everyone <laughs> thought, "Oh, this is just going to be a normal uh, PDC darts year." Um, the same for you. You went to Q school, um, and you played. Um, incredibly well already on the first day to 107 averages which is i mean really 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 great and then day two you won against menzies adam hunt dave prince and then in the final against uh, lisa ashton and then already yeah. on day two you had your pdc so tour card how do, what did you feel at that moment i didn't quite expect uh, that i could manage to achieve for for getting a tour card, but I, I've got really good form since last September. I mean, in 2019 September, I keep winning in soft tip. I win the world, the biggest uh, soft tip tournaments. I I, I play Pauline few times and I beat him. And then right before the uh, right before the uh, the Q school, I went to Singapore in January and I win a uh, soft tip tournament as well and then that brings on the good fortune to the Q school as well mm -hmm. um, and then I can uh, deliberate and then my 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 game so it's amazing I didn't even think of uh, of, of, of maybe winning but I, I just keep scoring just believe in myself prepare and then for the next one it's fantastic. Is because uh, when when I first came and then for the Q school I played in 2017, I watched uh, Royden winning his tour card, card yeah. uh, uh, in 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 Wigan, and he played uh, Jose de Souza <laughs> for the both final at that time. <laughs> I still I still remember. He got the 170 check out and go and check out it. I mean, he didn't make it that final bull, but. Then managed to get it through in the end, um, uh, and then now it's my turn for winning the tour card. And then I've got one Hong Kong car guy, Keith, uh, coming with me as well. And then 
when I would look back, he was there. So it's a little bit like me when I'm watching behind mm -hmm. um, as well. So that, that there's of course there's enjoy there's joy enjoyment in the in the uh, all, all through the games, and to play Lisa is uh, incredible as well. The, the final, I mean, there's like I remember there were like hundred people yeah. watching behind. So so. I think as a mini a mini concert for both of us <laughs> playing, and we we play until the decide as well, and she got the throw as well. Um, so I think it's a brilliant game uh, for getting the tool card, and and I'm so happy for her to get into tool card as well because last year she narrowly missed out. So it's it's happy to see her in the tool as well. Yeah. Well, I think uh, the PDC should be very happy to see uh, another Asian tour card holder again to, you know, globalize uh, the, the darts for it again. Um, yeah, you already called the name of uh, Rodan Lam. Um, when he got his tour card, I remembered he didn't really go for it. He didn't move to England to play the Players' Championships. Um, yeah, what made you decide to uh, fully go for this opportunity? opportunity? I mean, if I win... And then you have to play, you know, you've got no way, no road to go back. I mean, there's no U-turn. Just go straight forward. It's not a U-turn. It's you've got to explore another new challenge, mm -hmm. right? Because the challenge is right in front of you, then the door is open. Why do you want to go back and then to sit back and lay back to, to sit behind watching? You need to explore another door, you know, you never see. There's a lot of opportunity that maybe you know when I win the the two car or even when I come to the two car, I might think, oh, I might not even win one game. I mean, in the, in the two. But then, when you're opening another door, then you see, oh, you got a chance, you got an opportunity, and then you basically, you, if you pay more effort, and then you keep um, persistence, you know, like uh, giving your heart, everything. So definitely, there's chance, but of course, it's very hard. I know Rodin because, you know, it's not easy to live here because I've got my cousins here in Liverpool. So basically, I can stay with him. Otherwise, if you're asking me to stay only myself, mm -hmm. and then I gonna be mad because I've got my family as well. Like I say, I've got my three-year-old daughter and my wife in Hong Kong. It's a tough time for me as well. But if you're not going to try out, you, you I think you will regret. Because you know it's very hard to get a two card out of 800 people. I mean, from UK and Europe, right? Only 30 people out of 31 or 32 out of 800 people. So I think the the, the difficulty is is there. I mean, to get the to get the two card is very hard, and then you have to treasure it, and then you have to go and explore it, uh, no matter ways. I mean. In terms of uh, finance, financially, I mean, in terms of everything, you still need to have a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, luckily the opportunity you took worked out uh, pretty good, at least at the start of this year. You're doing uh, great on the Players' Championship. Um, yeah, I guess... Um, not, still... not great, <laughs> just uh, just uh, start. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's tough, I mean, but yeah, you learn every time when you play. I mean, I'm so happy, you know, got a lot of good people around me. I mean, of course, the only Asian face, then probably you might feel a bit weird, but I, I open myself to every player as well. I'm not just 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 playing darts, practicing. I go and every ball and then, and then to, to, to try to know each other as well. I mean, mm -hmm. now I've got some good friends like Stephen Buntings, Ricky, Dave Pallet, you know, a lot of people, and then come and shake my hands. Well, like Land Durant, come um, shake my hands, you know, stuff like that. I mean, they they appreciate somebody when they see you're away from your own country, when they know you have your family behind, and you made a sacrifice and you pay the effort. They 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 they, they respect as well. Then, of course, I need to play as well. I mean, it's not like uh, go and chill and then have a laugh like no. that. No, but you know, I, I open myself. You know, try to adapt a life here try to practice, uh, see how they practice, see, you know, everything, how they compete in the high level. Then that's really a good thing, you know, you observe and and, and, and you know a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Do you feel your level has um, 
uh, has risen while playing on the PDC tour? Um, my level, uh, I think, is still far away from from the real level. I mean, so that's why I need to keep going on practicing and try to uh, work on a little bit on that. Uh, but but then you can't giving up, right? Even though there is some distance from the best of the players, you still want to be more persistent, more consistent on your game. You can't think too much. So, so I think there's this chance, you know, to play better. Um, um, but then this, you still need to, you know, uh, rethink a little bit yourself. Your your game, the practice, the routine, stuff like that, that to to make yourself a little bit better, mm. to fit to fit in in the tool. Yeah. Um. One of the last questions I want to ask you. You've been playing um, steel tip darts for well, full full time steel tip darts for over half half year now. Um. How big is uh, soft tip darts still uh, part of your life? I still. It means a lot. I mean, without soft tip, soft tip darts, I won't even play the steel tips. Uh, so, so in the soft tip darts, it there is another way to practice. You know, the the the, the game is very intense. Nobody missing the balls. Nobody missing the cricket areas. Then it basically develops another another way to pressure to play against others. Of course, it's very hard to you know to manage between steel and soft because it is two games, different games. Mm -hmm. It's di different boards and different games, so to speak. But because there's two different boards, you can't you can't be good on both of them. So you still need to make some you know sacrifice a little bit of this. But you can't say if I play steel, I can't play soft, or vice versa. So so both of them. Uh, helps you out as well, and I was still playing soft tip for sure. I will still go back next year when the the world soft tip goes on, mm -hmm. when the soft super darts goes on. I still need to make some sacrifice uh, from the steel. But of course, when you have to focus now, when all the tournaments come in the steel, then you you need to give you a hundred percent to be ready. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank soft tip because. If not then, if not the dust live or if not the electronic machines, I mean, I won't even touch a dart at all in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's great to hear. Um, yeah, um, you've, in my opinion, in my opinion, you have uh, then uh, an, a year on the pro tour, which is, uh, I mean, pretty pretty okay for a new tour card holder. You qualified for a Euro tour, the Belgian Darts Championship. You were part of the UK Open, um, the Summer Series last 16 was your best uh, um, result, which is also a good result. You're now in the 20th place on the Pro Tour Order of, Order of Marriage, which means you are virtually uh, qualified for the World Championship. Did you um, expect doing so well at the start of your PDC career? Um, I think so. I just need to first win my first game. To win my first leg, and then start from there. So I need to build from there as well. Of course, there are a lot of advice from people who are watching me, even in the Dust Connect, or people like Stevens who who help me out a bit mind uh, mindset, you know, tuning as well. Because it's not easy, right? To if you keep losing, it's very hard, and then. But the, luckily, I'm, I don't have a lot of negative thoughts about myself. I mean, now I'll give it a go, right? So what I can do is to get better, right? Even I play worse. I mean, I, I just need to get myself ready for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've, I think that really trains up a bit because from my soft tip last two years, I play a lot of tournaments. So that a lot of there's a lot of disappointment and and enjoyment and joy and, and and over there. So I I quite learn a little bit that in my mind. Of course now I need to sharpen my game. That's the only thing. I think that's the way forward. 
Okay. Um, well, I want to uh, want to thank you, uh, Kai, for this uh, conversation about your career, um, the darts in uh, in Hong Kong and uh, the darts in Asia too. Um, yeah, and I wish you all the best. Hopefully, we'll s- see you on the Euro Tour or another major. Hopefully, the World Championship, of course, PDC World Cup of Darts. Um, at least enough to be looking forward to uh, seeing you back on that uh, PDC stage. And uh, I hope you're uh, going to be a big ambassador for the darts, for the young darts players in uh, Hong Kong too. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.